Hello, my name's Andrew Jose of Andrew Jose Salon in Charlotte Street, London. How to choose a fringe? Now, first of all, a fringe can be the most fantastic thing for choosing and bringing attention to the drama and the great points of the face. It's a wonderful thing for making different lines on the face stronger, uh, different points smaller, and really being very dramatic, bringing fabulous attention to the eyes. The important thing is how to judge your own face. So when I'm choosing to do a fringe, the first thing I'll do is literally pull the hair right the way back off the face so that I can see where we are. And then little by little, let the hair fall forward. And then start to choose what is the line and what is the shape that we want. Do we want a shape that goes really square? Or do we want one that falls around? And you can just really use, if you can't use your hair, use your hands on your face and see what happens to the face. So that if we come around and come down, so that you would have, um, I suppose classically you call that a 1960s type fringe. Then you could come down like that. And what happens, and as you move your hands slightly further forwards, then you'll see that the attention comes down onto the point of the chin or onto the mouth. But then as we come higher and we lift up, then you'll see the attention starts to draw the line off the eyebrow and off the side of the, off the, side of the eye. Equally, you can say, well, do we want a fringe that is very small? so that if we bring the hair right the way forward so that the sides of the fringe may stop literally at the side of the eye or do we allow the fringe to come right the way back to the side of the cheekbone all of this will change the way that your face moves and the way that it appears so don't be afraid of really experimenting but use your hands and if you're at the hairdressers, get the hairdresser to really show you exactly what shape of fringe that you should have. Now, the fringe that we've chosen for Katie is one that's going to be quite soft, but quite long, because we're going to choose a length where the eye is then drawn into, by being near, the, by being near her eyes, it will bring attention to her eyes and actually widen them. Uh, naturally, she has quite small eyes, quite petite eyes, but this will just really make them appear just a little larger. Now I'm going to cut a straight line, but I'm going to cut a straight line with the points of my scissors, which just makes it very soft. So we lift out and I'll just shape through. Now, a question that's often asked is how much hair should you have in a fringe? Now, what I would advise you don't do is to take the hair from the back of the head all the way forwards because then when you've cut your line, it will then travel all the way back into your haircut. So what we do is, is that if you put in a natural parting and just let the hair fall, you'll find that naturally the hair will drop forwards into a fringe. How wide you take it will be your personal choice, but that is the hair that you cut. Don't start combing it forwards because it will always fall back to where it came from.